Welcome. The sun has produced four X flares in the last four days, the largest of which was an X 4.5, which occurred today on the 6th of May. This is the third largest flare of Solar Cycle 25 so far. The flare occurred in sunspot region AR 3663, which is now nearing northwest Lim. This is where most of the activity over the last few days has come from. The flare peaked at about 6.30 UT on the 6th of May. It produced an R3, which is a very strong radio blackout over a fairly large portion of the Earth. No proton event was associated with it, which is a little strange. A CME is likely, but we have no data from the chronographs on SOHO to confirm that there was a CME. It's the fourth and largest flare in just three days. Here's the X-ray light curve for the last week, and you can see the four X flares marked here with arrows, the red arrow indicating the X4.5 flare. You can see also there's been a whole slew of M flares and C flares to go along with it. I believe there's been 34 M flares in that same time, which is quite remarkable. You'll notice that the X-ray background is also quite high. It's been at mid C level and sometimes near M level for uh, quite some period now. This is very typical of solar maximum, so we may be entering the solar maximum phase now. So let's take a look at the sunspot region itself. This is active region 3663. This is a video taken by the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI instrument. It's two days long. Note, first of all, the spot motions, the changes in spot size, and the changes in spot numbers. These changes all lead to more likelihood of flares. The sunspot images you just saw were taken at a temperature of about 5700 degrees Kelvin. That's the photosphere of the sun, one of the coolest parts of the sun. We we'll move up in temperature now to the transition region, which is the transition between the cold surface of the sun or the relatively cold surface of the sun and the very hot corona. And so we're going to use the helium 2304 line, which is about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. That is still, I stress, cool for the sun. This is a three hour movie. And one of the things to check here is, do you see any ejecta? Because that may indicate that there was a CME. Next, we'll take a look at the so-called cool corona at about half a million degrees. That doesn't seem very cool to me, but it's what's called the cool corona. This is using the Solar Dynamics of Surgery AIA 171 Angstrom channel. First of all, the thing to note here is the complex magnetic structure of this region and how it changes. And when the flare goes off, do you see a pressure wave move out, particularly to the northeast? Next, we'll go to higher temperatures, so the so-called quiet corona. This is AIA 193 at about 1.1 million degrees Kelvin. Please note how much more visible the flare is as we go to higher temperatures. Note the motion of the loops after the flare shockwave has passed. Now we're going to take a look at the active sun. That's about two and a half million degrees Kelvin using the AIA instrument 335 angstrom channel. Note here you can only see the high temperature loops 
associated with the sunspots themselves. That's the strongest magnetic fields. Hence the term the active sun. This is what is called the active regions on the sun. Last but no means least is the flaring sun. This is AIA 131 angstroms at about 10 million degrees Kelvin. Note there are pre-flare brightenings even at these high temperatures. And again, the detectors saturate at the flare peak. Normally at this point we'd be looking at the outer corona using the LASCO coronagraph C2 and C3. But at the moment the LASCO data is unavailable for this period of time, although it's just come back up again. But we don't have any data for the flare itself, which is a real shame. This flare has already affected the Earth. It produced an R3, which is a strong radio blackout over most of Asia and Eastern Africa and also Eastern Europe. That affects communications using frequencies below about 5 megahertz. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? We can expect more flares, certainly some more M's and possibly some X's as well. The CME may impact Earth and we have to wait and see whether it will. Uh, the initial indications is that we will get a glancing blow from it in a couple of days time. It also shows that solar cycle 25 is not slowing down in its pace of activity yet. So that's it folks. Uh, until next time, stay safe and goodbye.